Imagine you're constructing a new provincial town. You've got workers on the job, and you're earning a little money. You've built a camp, a village, and a smithy. You've even got an active harbor bringing sailors into your town. Things are going great, but then another family arrives, and they've got their sights set on the very resources you're after. You could learn to live together in harmony, or do what I want to do. Crush that other family! I'm Dave Kello from Apple World Today, and today I'm looking at Province from Laboratory on both the tabletop and iOS. In this video, I'll show you how the game is played, and I'll compare the tabletop version to the iPad version. Is one better than the other? Is the iOS version a faithful port of the tabletop version? Can these two versions live together? Or must one be crushed like the family in our story? I'll answer all these questions and more, so let's get started. Province for the Tabletop is a micro game, which means its components are really small. As you can see, the entire game board fits into my hand, which is something I like a lot. If I'm getting together with my gaming group, or my family, or some other friends, and I want to bring Province, it's really easy to do so. The box will easily fit into a bag, or even some bulky cargo shorts if you've got those. Province takes about 25 minutes to play, is for two players, and Laboratory recommends it's for players age 13 and up. Though I must say, my son is 9 years old and he has a good time playing Province, so you can knock that number down a little bit. As I said in the intro, the idea is you're building up a provincial town and trying to earn victory points along the way. The player who has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. So here's how it works. We start off by putting three green meeple workers on the work cycle. At the start of your turn, you can move the workers from one circle to another, always clockwise, and always one circle at a time. So let's move him here, him here, and him here. When you move them, you flip them over, just to keep track of who's moved and who's not. Workers that land on the hammer earn one labor, which you keep track of here. Workers who land on this symbol earn one coin. After this phase is done, you use what you've earned in both labor and money to purchase a building. The buildings give different awards like additional labor, additional workers, which is important, or additional money or other things. Let's say I have enough money to buy the camp and I'm playing as the red player. I'll put the building here and now I've unlocked a camper. So I have access to this worker in addition to the three green. Since I'm the first one to build this structure, I also get awarded the two victory points. Now when I take my turn, I can move everybody. I have additional worker, so I can theoretically gain an additional resource on each turn. The next player might build, let's say, the mill. He or she gains two victory points and gains one extra labor for free at the start of each turn. Now, if the blue player were to build a camp, he or she would get the benefit of a camper, but not the victory point. I also should explain the lender token, because this is sort of important. Let's say you want the benefit of a certain building that you don't own. The red player would love to gain that extra labor. So the red player will take the labor token, get the use of it, but the labor token reduces the number of victory points you have in your hand at the end of the game, and you must pay three money to get rid of it. Now let's look at the goal tokens. At the start of every turn, there'll be five of them stacked up here. These are worth one victory point each at the end of the game, and the way you earn them depends on your meeting a certain criteria. For instance, to win this one, you must generate five labor in a single turn. Uh, indicated by the five hammer icons. If you do that, this is yours to keep. Now the game ends when one of each building has been constructed, when a single player has built seven, or when all of these are gone. The last thing I'll talk about is the harbor. If you build the harbor, you get access to the harbor. So at the beginning of your turn, you will throw these two harbor tokens and see what you get. A white and a black, means I get, um, I can convert money into a meeple. To white, I gain a free labor, and to black, I gain free money. It's really good to grab the harbor as soon as you can. 
Like I said, the game plays really quickly, it's very easy to understand, it's fun and strategic. You can not only go to grab the resources you need, but through movement, prevent your opponent from grabbing the resources he or she needs. It's really a lot of fun, and I enjoy playing it and carrying it around. How does it compare to the iOS version? Let's take a look. All right, so let's take a look at Province on the iPad. Right away, I think it looks great and maintains the spirit of the tabletop version. There's a nice parallax effect in the background, as you can see, and I like that the image in the background is the same as the image on the back of the tabletop game board. That's really cute. Um, there's a one and two player option. There is a tutorial you can go through. It's really text heavy, but it does teach the game if you don't know how to play. And you can toggle audio on and off. I like to keep it on because you hear birds chirping and the sounds of hammer on metal and all that sorts of sort of thing. So it's, it's cute. So let's get started by launching a one player game. Right away, I have to laugh. I think it's funny that the uh, game board on the iPad is actually larger than the game board and the tabletop version, but that's a micro game for you. Um, it looks exactly identical. Even the placement of the little houses on the board are just where there are on the tabletop and the trees. So it looks fantastic. The art's beautiful. Um, you start with your three green workers on the work wheel, which I will move to begin my turn. You can see the game flips them over for you, which is nice and convenient, so you know who's been used and who hasn't. That turn got me two labor and three coins, and I think I will use that to build the mill. So I'll tap the mill. My red structure goes there. Um, I gained the victory point, as you can see at the bottom, and now I will gain one extra labor per turn just as a benefit of owning the mill. And I'll tap the arrow in the lower right to pass the turn to the AI player. Now, I found the AI is pretty good. It isn't so easy that you just blow it out of the water every turn, nor is it too difficult to beat. Um, it's a nice mix, so it's sort of challenging, and that makes it more satisfying to play because uh, you don't want to know you're going to win or lose every time. That just takes the fun out of it. Uh, on the AI's turn, it built the camp, so it now has an additional worker. Uh, that's good for it. I don't have one of those just yet. I'll take my next turn by moving the players around once again. This time I have three labor and one coin. That's not going to do a whole heck of a lot, so I will pass the turn. There are some things I like here that are just inherent to electronic games. It keeps track of scoring for you. It keeps, if someone earns a goal token, it tells you that automatically. You don't have to keep track of that. It keeps track of the lender token and, like you saw, flipping workers. These are just little niceties that an electronic game can pull off that you can't do with a tabletop game. I do have a complaint about this, however. If you start a game on accident, there's no way to abandon a game in progress. For example, let's say you accidentally tap two player when you meant to hit one player. You can't just say, oh, forget it. I want to scrap this game and let me start over. You have to play through and finish it to the end, which is kind of a bummer. I had to <laughs> play through a couple times while making this video because I did something by mistake that I couldn't undo. Oop, there, it's used to lender token. Other than that, I'm very, very happy with this version of Province. I think it looks great. It maintains the spirit of the desktop game and is portable. Now, uh, this is available as of this recording for $4.99 from Apple's App Store. Compare that to the $7.99 I paid for the tabletop version from Amazon, and you'll see there's not a huge difference. I don't really think of it as an expensive iOS game. I think of it as a nice companion to a very inexpensive tabletop game. So at the end, I'm really happy with Province on the iPad. I think it's great. I wish there were a way to abandon games and I wish there were an iPhone version, but those are minor complaints. It is definitely recommended and it gets an official Apple World Today two thumbs up. So there's my look at Province from Laboratory on both the tabletop and the iPad. I kept this video kind of short, but if you want more information, you'll find a full written review plus a gallery of great photos of the components at appleworld.today. Go to appleworld.today and search province in the handy dandy little search bar and you will find it. I hope you found this useful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon.